Anthropic just dropped over 10 updates inside of Claude Code, but unlike all of the other creators out there, I really want to focus on three that I think make the biggest impact on writers and content creators, or really anybody who uses Claude Code for non-development work and for content creation workflows, okay? So today we're going to be using, I'm going to be using Cursor with Claude Code. Now you could be using any code editor tool that you want, but this is what we use for building out our writing system. Now the first update that we want to look at is the context update. So here on the right side of the screen, you can see I made a Claude Code cheat sheet for writers, which will be available to my Substack subscribers. And this is a quick reference for the commands and shortcuts. But what we're going to look at is the slash context one. So here we have Claude Code launched already activated, and we're going to do slash context. And what this is going to give us is a visualization of all of the current context that we're using inside of our system here. All right. And this is very helpful whenever you start, you know, seeing that the quality is degrading or really you're just trying to get a good bird eye view of what is going on inside of your system. You know what it is using, what is taking up the most space. So slash context and we're going to run it and you're going to see that this is what I have here. Now, before we start looking at this, if you're not familiar with building up a writing system inside of Claude Code, I have some other videos on that that you want to check out, like my Claude Code Masterclass for writers. I also have another one on Claude skills and using the Chrome extension. Everything I do inside of Claude Code is for writers and content creators and, and sort of non-development work like that. Now, on the left side, you're going to see what my system looks like. We have the Claude, the .clod file, and this holds the agents that I have. All right, I have various agents there, my Claude skills. I also have all my context here, context profiles, if you're not familiar with that, JSON uh, context profiles, which give you know these this information and context about my businesses, about my voice, my, my ideal client profiles, stuff like that. We have some deployments that I have, some sites in different um, you know, different apps that I created from within inside of my system. I have a knowledge base and this holds like, like what it sounds like all of the different knowledge for my system. I have lead magnets. I have my newsletters, visual assets, YouTube transcripts, everything like that. Then we have the Claude.md file, which is our system instructions. I have a to-do list just for you to have an idea of everything I have inside of this system here, right? So now, you know, before that was great. I can see it all there, but I can't really see, you know, what is taking up the most space, what is using the most context tokens, but now we can do that. So the first thing you're going to see here is a visualization of your context usage. We're going to see that I use Claude Opus 4.5. We can see how many tokens that's taking and then a breakdown. So we have my system prompt, which is using 3.1 thousand or 1.6%. We can see my system tools, my MCP tools, my custom agents, my memory files, messages, and free space. And really, the first thing I noticed right away when I saw this was that the MCP tools take up so much, right? So they take up 21.6%. I was also pretty surprised to see that the agents only take up 0.1% and the, the prompt actually takes up 1.6%. So there were some surprising things that I never really had insight into as you know a non-developer working inside of here. But, you know, now I can see that in the MCP tools is important because really I only have two MCPs installed here. The first one is Airtable, which gives my system in Claude Code access to all of my analytics, my Airtable databases. And I also use Notion here, which gives it access to all of like my front facing content and these different pages that I create on Notion. Example, this this Claude Code cheat sheet for writers, which is a Notion page that I give to my subscribers and followers. So if you ever start using a lot of MCPs and, and you, you know, start running into context problems, then you would be able to decide which ones to get rid of or include. My agents, you can see all here, I have a content repurposing agent, a social media writer, a newsletter writer, a researcher, community engagement agent, and a marketing writer. Very little space, which is good because I plan on expanding this more and more to hopefully eventually having 10, 15, 20 agents doing different writing operations. So that is really what the context allows you to see. Really cool, really important feature. You should definitely, you know, check in on that all the time. Now, the second one that I think is important for writers and content creators is the slash stats command, all right? And this allows you to view your usage dashboard. So both of these first two are really just about seeing inside of Claude Code and what you are doing and, and what is being used up in your activity. So when we do slash stats, we can see an overview, a monthly overview of our usage. We can see our favorite model, the total tokens we've used, 
you know, here I have 325 sessions, current streak, active days, the longest session, uh, longest streak, and, and you know, like my peak hours. So you really get some insights into what you're writing and content creation looks like inside of Claude Code. If you hit tab here, you're going to see the model usage. For me, you can see a lot of it is Opus uh, 4.5. I really use Opus 4.5 for everything, for all of my content writing and operations. And that's because I use the max plan on Claude, which allows me to have the, which can translate over into Claude code, transfer over into Claude code. So I really have the $200 a month max plan and I never even go close to running into limits and I work all day long inside of Claude code. So really you should have no problems there using Opus 4.5. So that is the second essential command that we want to look at, update that we want to look at. And the third and last one has to do with plugins. So this third one, if you put slash plugins, this is what allows you to install plugins inside of Claude Code. Now, a plugin can be a lot of different things. It can be a package of tools. It can be Claude skills. It can be MCP servers. And now what we have is when you first type in slash plugin, you're going to see this discover plugins page. And these are the official Anthropic uh, plugins that they included here. Now you can go through these. There's 40 of them here right now. And there are a couple that really are helpful specifically for writers and content creators and anybody doing that type of non-development work. The first would be something like Asana, which allows you to do project management integration. Not something I use myself, but I know a lot of people do. And then the one that I think most of you will be interested in is the, if we come down here, we should see a Notion the Notion workspace integration. Now, Notion is a huge one. Notion, one of the top tools for writers and content creators. So this Notion plugin, if you click enter here, you're going to see that it's a Notion workspace integration that allows you to search pages, create and update documents, manage databases, and access your team's knowledge base directly from Claude Code for seamless documentation workflows. If you look on the right side of my screen here, you can already see that I have Notion. This is where this Claude Code cheat sheet is. And I literally created this with the Notion MCP inside of Claude Code. So as I was planning out this video with Claude Code here on the left, it was connected to my Notion. And in the end, I told it, you know, to make up this Claude Code cheat sheet for writers. And it created that, you know, it can create that by itself inside of Notion. I can also pull information from Notion. You could store, you know, all your newsletters or your articles or your content, digital products. All of that can be directly connected to your writing system inside of Claude Code now very easily. So what you would do here is just install it. You have a couple different options. You can install it just for yourself inside of this project here. So inside of this folder, inside of this Claude, Claude workflow here, or you can install it across your entire local device so that all every time you start new Claude projects now, it's also going to be included. I recommend just installing it on your project, especially if you're doing different work for different clients or different purposes. That way it just stays clean and separated. And all you're going to do is click install. It's going to install the plugin and then you're going to have to connect and, and authenticate it through Notion, which is pretty simple, just logging into Notion and it will kind of set that up automatically for you. So that is the third one. We have all these different ones. Another, uh, you know, one I would recommend for writers and content creators is the front end design tool. So this one allows you to create distinctive production grade front end interfaces with high design quality. This allows you to generate creative polished code that avoids generic AI aesthetics and it works incredible. So if you're familiar with any of my other videos or any of my other content, Sometimes I have these really nice presentations. I have these really nice HTML sites. And this is all using Claude Code's front end design skill, which is connected here to my system. And for example, in my folders here, I can have like my branding guidelines, my colors. I can have di different visual assets. And inside of Claude Code, I can combine all of that, that context and visual assets and guidelines with this front end design skill to create, you know, hyper personalized sites or you know apps uh, with non-generic AI aesthetics, which everybody's getting tired of and which is uh, pretty, pretty terrible at this point. So those are the three updates that I think are super important for writers and content creators. Definitely check them out. If you are not subscribed to my Substack or YouTube, make sure to do that. And paid subscribers get access to this Cloud Code cheat sheet, but also many other uh, different digital assets and resources, such as the you know starting folder right here for you to use inside of Cloud Code. Check out the master classes, and then uh, yeah, you can start using this for now on. But context stats, 
and plugins, the three new updates from Cloud Code that you should really know about for writing operations.